you know, I had I had really wanted to uh, go quite a bit longer. I still feel like I'm 30 years old when I'm coaching. Uh, it just brings something out deep inside of me. I always have. Uh, born and raised in Beaumont, went to played at McNeese in Lake Charles. Um, uh, coached, to, came back to Beaumont, coached there, won a state championship. Uh, started my head coaching career in 1980 at Hardin Jefferson as athletic director, and head coach. Uh, Dr. Brightup was one of my first hires. Uh, he coached uh, freshman football. Was my head basketball coach there, and, and uh, we've had, uh, you know, we've had a, a great career. I've had tremendous coaching staffs. So I've got, uh, form, I got superintendents and and other ads and college coaches, and, and I've got I think five superintendents. I got three, three guys in college, and I got about uh, seventeen total that are in the coaching profession. And to me, it's still an honorable profession. I'm an old school guy. I still believe that. Coaches in high school or have a special place in heaven, and uh, and they're important in the community, and and uh, I just you just can't get away from that fact. And uh, we've had some great successes, and I've experienced the, the end of that spectrum too. I've been 0 and 10. I've been a state champion, and 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 we've won uh, as as a head coach. I've been part of uh, football state champion, powerlifter state champion, track state champions. Uh, as an athletic director, I've had basketball, I've had softball, I've had golf, five golf teams won state championships, uh, uh, three in a row at Hardin Jefferson. Uh, we've won tennis championships, uh, you know. So uh, we believe in doing things the right way. We're going to work till the cows come home. We're going to, you know, uh, start at daylight and work till dark 30 if that's what it takes. But if you can get it done in 30 minutes and work and, and accomplish just as much and work smart, uh, then that's great too. That's all right too. But everything we do is going to be about the process that we're going to to try to bring a great, lasting championship type mentality, mindset, and memories to the people in Livingston rather than mediocrity. We're not interested in any part of mediocrity, and we want to we want to truly become a dominant program in four athletics in the state of Texas. And 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 I and I just. There is no doubt in my mind that we're this close to getting there. Now, how long that's going to take, who knows? But that's that's the ultimate. That's the plan. Well, I don't know if it's it's, it's you know blessed or unlucky, but we've taken over quite a few uh, uh, down type programs, and or brand new, open up from scratch where there's nothing but a dirt pad out there. Coach, you got to see what we're fixing to build. You know that type of time like we did, and we did the same thing in Angleton. Uh, what people have forgotten about that 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 they just incredibly gifted and talented uh, for years and then they just kind of disappeared and their facilities had gone completely dilapidated um, it was just awful the things that had taken place and gone and they had lost had a couple of big plants that had closed down and, and uh, moved you know 3,000 people back to to uh, California that type of thing and it just wiped them they went from 6A to 4A just boom like overnight and then were slowly starting to come back up we went there and took that over and did the same type of thing there did, you know, uh, uh, Die Ball was in peril. They were in just, and they had been legendary in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you know, with five different guys in the NFL, and they just, I mean, holy mackerel. And and the bloodlines were still there. They still had, you know, grandparents and uncles and aunts and cousins and little brothers, and, you know, and, and they'd, they'd gone 2 and 8, 0 and 10, and every kind of UIL sanction imaginable, and basketball was suffering the same type when there was just kind of a an air of lawlessness and problems and and things and the, uh, they built that new high school and ran out of money didn't finish the facilities and it didn't have any facility they were horrible just terrible and so we had to do we did we did discipline and police work and construction uh, from the get-go you know and uh, I had a board that said coach you need to bring some great coaches with you we're going to help you with that because the first year or two you're not going to be doing a whole lot of coaching. It's going to be creating a culture here and setting up some discipline parameters and getting us on the right track on facilities. And so we did that there. We did it. I did the same thing at Hardin Jefferson. Did the same thing at Angleton. We built a 14 million dollar athletic complex down there. That's just absolutely incredible. And then we did the, that was one of, the, one of the big things that drew me to the chance to go to Tomball was the fact it was absolutely square zero, not step one. It was square zero. And old Mr. Newbrow, the superintendent there, said they want you to open it up just like you've done the other schools that you've done. And you're going to be in charge of overseeing construction of facilities and creating a program and 
and hiring every person and ordering every piece of equipment and da 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 da. da. So I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, a lot of guys will never take a job that didn't just get off of a championship. And I've never been lucky enough or good enough or you know I don't know what. Never never been able, never done that. And uh, so I don't know if I'll even be able to. But I do know that I can do this. And and we're expecting great things. Uh, but with high expectations come very high demands and none are going to be any higher than the demands I place on myself or my coaching staff and then the kids come next on that as far as those demand lists too and, and I know it's, so it's a reciprocal deal it's a two way street just like uh, loyalty is a two way street and respect is a two way street and those demands and expectations high demands high expectations just like low ones are are, are, are going to be a reciprocal thing and but they're going to be a daily thing oh, wow. yeah, we're buying the eight ball right now that's, that's the only problem but <clears throat> my wife and I were talking about this the other day and I talked with Coach Hurley a lot, you know, I'm blessed and lucky that that's another one of the things that made it so appealing was to be able to reunite with some of the best guys that I've ever enjoyed working with before and Dr. Hawkins and Coach Hurley and I was blessed and lucky to be able to hire them both early, early, early in their careers and put them in positions of their first head coaching jobs and, and then they left me and ended up hiring them back a second time for other things. And then, Mr. Hawkins ended up going into the administration, and, and, and the year I left, Dabo, he had just become the principal there, so I've seen him grow and go through, the, and, and we believe in the same things. We're from the same background. Coach Hurley and I are, are as close to a, a big and little brother as there is, and we've definitely been raised the same way. Both our dads were military guys. Uh, were the great old country athletes, both of them, uh, and, and yes sir, no sir folks, and, and you know, it was about respect and honor and dignity and leaving things better than you found them type folks. And that's the way we both were raised. And, and uh, uh, the, the opportunity to possibly reunite that again was just too, too great and tempting to pass up. And uh, uh, I'd done all the flower beds I cared to do and, and all the uh, uh, working cows and baling hay down at my mom's and Winnie. Uh, trying to help her out that I cared to die. I remembered why I, I walked away from that about 40 years ago and said, I don't want to do this for a living. And, uh, uh, you know, so the chance to the chance to come here and do that with the folks that we have here and the people that we had and, and, and having knowledge of, you know, firsthand knowledge of, you know, one of my greatest, fondest memories was the, the game here that we set the all-time record in, with, with Jermichael catching, uh, you know, five touchdown passes and 15 catch or 18 catches that night here and was my 100th victory of my head coaching career. Uh, so I have some great fond memories of this place. Uh, uh, and, and, and we've had playoff games here and we've played Livingston in tons of different sports. The, the, just before I took the job in May at Angleton and May at Dybal, okay, it was just, there's so many similarities it's unbelievable you know everything else is always you know if you can't get it by february you're wasting your time don't do it wait till the next year you're too far behind but two two of the most successful places we've been in our career <clears throat> was or actually three was Harden, jefferson down bottom angleton and every one of those jobs i got hired in may uh so it's, it's about your approach it's about your planning it's about your structure uh, uh you know how you, you, you make things work and how you keep going and the dynamics of it and, and it's sell, sell, sell and get out and meet and, and hold community meetings and go to their churches and meet them and talk to have booster club meetings and, you know, and have parent conference and have meet with the kids and talk to them. Uh, I had two days. They were already in final exams at Angleton when I walked in there. They were in final exams. And so I squeezed about a 40-minute study hall period out of my varsity athletes one day, and then I had them for the athletic period the next day. So I lined up out there. I said, no, y'all don't know me from Adam, but here, let me have all the wide receivers stand right here. And here's the quarterback here, and give me the running back, the lineman here, I want y'all to the defense y'all. This is what we're going to be, this is what it's going to look like. And here's some of the words, vocabulary y'all are going to hear us say, and da-da-da-da-da, and uh, the bell rang. And I said, okay, uh, I'll see y'all in two weeks for the summer program, you know. So... Uh, you know, we, and and, and uh, you know, we go four rounds deep. You know, three years in a row. So uh, after that first year, you know, we went five and five, and then we got it rolling, and, and, and that was it. So uh, uh, there's a method to the madness. Uh, uh, like I said, opportunity knocks, and you don't know it, but the similarities are just eerily the same. May Harden Jefferson, May Dyball, May Angleton, May. In fact, I got about a week and a half head start here as we did it as we did it Angleton. Uh, so uh, 
you know, a lot of people have trouble with that. I, I don't. You can't worry about that. So we've got, we've got, uh, you know, all calls have been out and placed, and, and and the guys are doing meetings with their wives and families right now as we speak, and and uh, there'll be some some folks that I'll be bringing through the next few days, uh, all the way up to the end of school to to make some final decisions. Show, sure, and it's not hard to, you know. The, the boast and brag about the facility when you go out to the junior high and high school like you've got here. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. I'm telling you, that's what I was telling Mr. Hawkins yesterday. We took me to the weight rooms and the stuff, even at the junior high, you know, which I knew was supposed to have been a high school anyway, because we were at Dye Ball when they were building that, so I knew how big it was. Now, I said, let me tell you something. The, the stuff that we had, yeah, it was brand new. Yeah, it was really nice there at Angleton, but but I built it. Okay? Yeah, it was really nice there at Tomo, but I built it. Yeah, it was really nice. At, at Dino, but we had to build it because what we had when we went in there was god awful. I mean, awful. And this is so far ahead of that already, it's unbelievable. I mean, that's as nice a field house as there in the state of Texas. The weight room is incredible, it's gorgeous. They're building fields, putting in the new track. The key is another similarity. First year, they had that brand new. The only difference, they already had it built out there at, at Dino. They had a $258,000 track built that they had locked the gate, they'd never striped it, and they'd locked the gates and never used it, and it had been there for four years. We had, we had to go in there with brush hogs and cut sapling trees down to get that thing started, but we held a track meet there that first year, that, that spring, okay, that next spring, and I said it couldn't be done. And when they saw us doing that, and those kids saw that, and the town saw that, the buy-in began when we started, when we got out of that old rat trap sewer place down there at Angleton and put them in that new facility there at that thing, we kept telling them about it, here's what it's going to look like, here's what it's going to be. And as they saw it coming up and building up and growing, the buy-in started, and up, and, well, it's already begun out here, it don't have to start it, it's already got the track coming in, that field, and putting another new practice field, a gorgeous uh, field house there, a beautiful high school incredible amount of room in the little junior high stadium over there with their own track and their own state. You can't beat it. So there's a lot of things that are positive on Head Start here that people don't understand. Yeah, the culture's a little weak on some things, but that's okay. Uh, you know, if it wasn't, I wouldn't be here. So uh, you got to keep things in perspective. We're going to look good physically, okay? We're going to look good in our uniforms. We're going to look good getting off that bus. And when we get off the bus, the folks are going to be proud of what they see take place out there. Okay, and what, regardless of the outcome, they're still going to be proud of what they just saw in competition level out there. The character, the class, the intensity that what they play, uh, excitement, uh, both on the field. And we're not, you know, we're not ashamed to high five and chest bump with the kids. And I'm not ashamed to, you know, horse collar one up and tell them, "Hey, Hoss, you know, you got to, you, you better if you ever do that again, you, you know, you're not going to be out here wearing this green and white, you know, that type of thing." And and. Uh, we're going to love on them openly, and we're going to get after their behinds openly too. And, and we're going to and we're going to coach them up and love them up and and raise them and treat them like our own. And they're going to they're going to they're going to enjoy what they see take place out there. Now it's going to be a process. Sure, absolutely. I want to tell you right now, we're going to be in the playoffs. I I, I want to tell you that. I, I haven't seen an athlete yet. I ain't even you know. They may not even show up tomorrow. I may have to spend the next. Eight, uh, 11, 12 weeks hunting them and finding them, getting them to come back out. Who knows? And then again, they may all turn out and get after it after the first three meetings this next week because I'm starting tomorrow. We've already, Coach Hardy's already got it scheduled up. I'm meeting with the kids, uh, the, uh, the, 10, or the 10, 11th graders at, at fifth period, and I'll meet with the freshmen the last period. And the next day, I'm going to junior high and do both seventh and eighth grade. I'm going to be handing out stuff about our summer weight pro strength and conditioning program that I helped design and, and, and pull with the UIL. That's what we created at Die Ball and used for two years when we built those facilities up there and, uh, and, and the community and the board said, you will be here. They will use it all summer and you and your coaches will supervise. I said, that's great, boys. I'm good with that, except the UIL says that's against the rules. Okay, So I had to make a presentation in Austin about what my board was demanding that we do with that $7 million facility up there and weight training and everything. And I said, y'all got me between a rock and a hard place here. So... They approved it as a as a as a as a temporary thing as a pilot program, and then we went up and I served on the committee of five uh, regional directors and on the committee that, that designed the UIL's summer off season strength and conditioning. They even printed up and used uh, used our program to, uh, at the beginning on what, on the way we did it, and, and that's been in use now for about ten or eleven years. So we've done it. We call it fast uh, flexibility, agility, strength, and toughness. And, that, and that's what our program does in the summer, and, and it's a very important part. And then we have a big 6th, uh, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade football camp the week before we start football practice. 
And when, every time we had a lion or a panther or a tiger, or whatever, we just always had called it little cats. That's our little cats camp. And, and, and that's what we just, here we are back with the lions again, so we'll keep doing the same thing. And, and so we have a, we have a three day thing there. We come out to the Texas High School Coach Association Convention. We come back on Wednesday. We do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, evening at night, like 5 to 7.30. And, and we'll have a football camp, uh, with all those young kids. And then we have a, a, a little catch program that we have with fifth and sixth grade boys during the season, uh, where we employ and do things with them on Saturday mornings with our varsity team and on Friday nights at the game. And they get a little t-shirt and a photo with their big guy, that kind of stuff. So lots of ways that you got to sell it and get out and get things done. And so that's, we're going to spend the next two and a half, three weeks doing nothing but that. Hands on with the kids and the community and, you know, and get, get the idea and the concept out there. Then we got to get the buy-in from them. The culture, that's where it starts.